Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the third ever episode of the Clients for Creatives podcast. Today, I'm going to be actually interviewing a good friend of mine, Blaze. Uh, so, Blaze, thank you so much for getting on the show, and I really hope people are going to get some value out of this one. Uh, I mean, I'm sure about it. Uh, so, yeah, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Hey, everyone. Vince, thanks for having me. So to put simply, I help um, other people's entrepreneurs, existing coaches, consultants, high ticket service providers uh, to build their business with organic marketing and then later with paid acquisition, paid client acquisition methods, mostly Facebook advertising. Awesome. I mean, that sounds very, very exciting. So how did you actually get into doing this? If you don't mind asking, like just for the beginning of the podcast, I want to give people a, a brief like you know, history of, of your journey and kind of how you got into doing what you are doing now, because I'm pretty sure like you didn't really uh, even have an idea that you can do this for a living when you were, you know, 18, 19 going into university. So, yeah, can you like take us through your journey, uh, like what you were like as a kid and uh, kind of how your interests evolved and got you to this point where, you know, you're running like pretty significant uh, consulting business at what, 26 you are? Yeah, I'm 27 yeah. actually. Okay. Dude, 27. I think this is, a, this is the longest question I've ever received in my life. So I'm just going to try my best to like kind of break it down. But I yeah, think no worries. First, like, feel free to take your time. Uh, with yeah, the first, the first big question was like, what was I like as a kid, right? Something like that. Um, yeah. To like, simply, I was always very. I, I always had the go-getter attitude. So, like, whatever I find something new, I was like, wow, this is so exciting. Like, let's see what I can do with this thing. Like, whether it was like sport or, you know, like outside of school, pretty much like anything. I like always tried my best, and I think I. I just took that mentality into business as well. And this is what I really believe in, like in life. That's what I enjoy mostly to find something that excites me and then just go all in and see what is possible. And when I feel like things are not serving me anymore on this journey, then that's when I learned to let go of things and just, you know, new things can replace um, the place of those things, mm. essentially. And um, how I got into entrepreneurship is pretty much... I think when I was at my bachelor's, like I was 2021 20, or something, there was a teacher um, who was teaching entrepreneurship and he you know, came to a class and he explained the whole thing around entrepreneurship. And I was like, whoa, this, I didn't know this is like, you know, it was very exciting to me. I never actually thought about becoming an entrepreneur before. Mm -hmm. And so, um, because I had no parents, like the, my, my father is a teacher, my mother is a doctor. So no one really around me uh, was an entrepreneur. So I, you know, didn't really know how it works and then from there I was like well this is interesting because I you know I need to solve problems so ultimately that's what it's all about so I was like mm, I like solving problems that's you know kind of like my thing so then from there I ended up in the Netherlands in my master's uh, studying strategic management and entrepreneurship um, only to realize it's not really helping me to become an entrepreneur <laughs> if I'm being super frank and so I kind of learned a lot of things, but I never actually, if I'm being very honest with myself, I never implemented those blueprints uh, I've learned over there because they were just blueprints without, mm -hmm. you know, like the actual technicalities of how you can implement them. And so I remember my brother recommended me listen to Gary Vaynerchuk. So I just like, you know, like went, went crazy on this podcast. Like I listened to every single episode every day in the gym while I was lifting weights. And, um, it really pushed me to to create my master. So I like I created my master's, called a friend, and I, I didn't know what I was doing back then. I just called her and I was like, hey, do you want to do something together? Because she was really smart. She's like, Yeah, why not? What, what are you thinking? I'm like, let's build a marketing agency. Because like that's what that was the only idea in my mind. I was like, Yeah, we can just, you know, run some SEO, some Facebook ads, like some Instagram, like everything, right? Like all the services. Yeah. I, I thought it's gonna work, right? and so we, we like we spend you know how it goes like we spend a couple months like three four months trying to build those things out uh and then ultimately you know after like four four months we were like well i think we should get some clients maybe no like we, we did all the planning right like all the vision boards yeah the we website right? everything Dude, it was like crazy that, yeah. the logo like spent yeah. <laughs> days on the logo and what's the name of the business <laughs> And so, yeah, then, then, then we figured we don't know how to get clients. So we like tried really hard, but people were like, 
pretty bad at it to be honest so like we, we kind of like quit there was like oh this is not working it's too hard to quit and then I started a bunch of other things like I, I tried becoming a fitness influencer at first or like I wanted to be a PT slash fitness influencer and then I heard like e-commerce is hot so I like I launched um, an apparel, apparel a product we lost like 4,000 euro and I would say like four months of time mm -hmm. <laughs> building that and then we did Instagram automation business, like, you know, these like weird bots and like the message yeah. and follow on follow. It was brilliant. Like <laughs> got some clients for that one as well. And so, yeah, long story short, I had like a couple failed um, business attempts mm -hmm. um, before I found social media marketing agency. And, uh, and then that's what, that's what really started working for me. Uh, I bought a course from a guy called Imam and started following his processes and then I started running clients. So my lesson was there that like, you can try it on your own, like as long as you want to, but to me, the real success came once I had like a proven process. And so I needed to yeah, pay yeah. for that proven process to actually implement the whole thing. And not um, even just a proven process, right? But the active, like investing into kind of yourself, quote unquote, I, either, even though it's like the most cliche thing probably that you can say nowadays, uh, but like, really, it's not even about like investing into yourself, but more so that you are putting your money where your mouth is right and, and you have something on the line because if you pay like a lot of your money or what's a lot of money to you at that time for a program or a consulting offer or whatever, then you're like, all right, I need to make this shit work. Otherwise, I just wasted all this money. Um, so I think that was probably also a big part of it, right? Like why things only started clicking then? Cause I know you, you even like downloaded, uh, <laughs> I remember, courses yeah. before that, like you used to be big on that, which I don't Dude, spend two, three hours, two, three hours just to find them somewhere where I can like get them for free. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. You used like, to be that guy. <laughs> yeah. That was me being honest. Yeah. Well, yeah, partially that was one, like that was, yeah to pay for something and then like commit another aspect is like really to to have the proven processes i think it's important when you do the work you know it's like working to other people and i think the third one is like we have so much information nowadays like it's crazy like you go on youtube you can learn anything and this is what i keep saying if information in itself information was the answer to all our questions and would help us like you know go push through the pain and build successful successful businesses then do like everybody would be like multi-millionaires with rock hard six pack. Yeah. But it's just not happening, right? Like I can give what I teach. I can give the, the video formats to other people, the course, even for free. And they would get like pr probably no results. And what I teach, I know it's good. And then, and then some people, some people pay me thousands of dollars and they got results like crazy. And I think one thing is really that once you pay money for something and I'm the same, I'm like, well, I paid for money, some cost. Like I like, have to do something with this information. I have to execute <clears throat> on this process that's laid out for me. And then I have no time to watch YouTube. Like it's really like, if I'm watching something, it's the actual process I paid for. So mm -hmm. like I cancel out everything else. So really not watching anything else. And my mind is like not shattered in a way that I like getting distracted information from all kinds of sources. It's more like one, one process I'm following. That's what Makes I found sense. to be like super helpful to me. Okay. So, so you bought the agency course, you started up the, the social media agency, you got some clients with that. And then how did you end up, end up transitioning from that into more like a business coaching or consulting that you are focusing on mainly now? I see. Yeah. So first, I think it's an important part because maybe there, there are people watching uh, who are not native English, they're coming from other countries. Yep. And I always, I always hear those people, it's harder for them because they just don't know whether they do it in their own language or English or, you know, it's always, a conf it's always confusing. And so I started on my own language. I'm from Hungary. So I started in Hungarian, like helping Hungarian clients. And yeah, just like uh, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I grow that, I think I grow that agency to like five, 6,000 US dollar per month, which is a lot of money in Hungary. It's like a fair amount of money in Hungary. And then I, I remember like you guys kept telling me that I should try like the international markets, right? Like you, my brother, all the people around me. But I was like, I don't know. I was, I had this insecurity. I'm maybe not good enough. My English is maybe not good enough. 
And so I, it that kept me where I was, right? And mm -hmm. then in 2020, I finally gave in and I started going after clients uh, in English and I landed a client and we, that, that client paid us over 70,000 US dollar in customer lifetime value. In one month, they paid like over 40K. So uh, lesson learned, like don't let those limiting beliefs hold you back. Just give it a try. Like what's the worst thing that can happen? Like mm -hmm. imagine if I was, if I was still like just, you know, doing that in, in the Hungarian market. I don't yeah. think I would be where I am right now. <clears throat> and so yeah, that was definitely the, not. Yeah, that was the first thing. And then, um, and then the second was that as I was running these ads to people, like we had clients, we had clients who were bringing in a uh, six figure month. So it's like over a hundred thousand dollars per month. Uh, some of them like 20, 30 K, 50 K. And we were building marketing funnels, email marketing, a lot of automations. We were running Facebook ads. And one of the biggest things I've learned is that none of like none of them had their business like kind of fully figured out. So I always felt like whoever is like making like 100k a month, they have like everything, you know, like laid out like they're just like it's the perfect system. And in reality, there were always a couple of things I spotted and we could improve. So that's when I was that's what I started thinking about if that's the case, right, and I'm super passionate about like finding these things and learning, learning about these things. I, I was coaching my clients already, right? And they were appreciating it, the support they have. I was sending these videos to them. So that's when that's when I that's when I realized maybe I should like triple down on like, you know, actual coaching as opposed to like running Facebook ads for other people, especially because um I found that um it, it's really not easy to find those clients and engage with those clients, like the ones that actually need Facebook ad help, because they're usually already doing very well. So they don't really have a reason to talk to you. And so that's what I found like to having a front, this is kind of like a front end offer, right? I still like, I still passionate about running those ads to specific people or being mm -hmm. in a, you know, in a specific, with, you know, certain criteria. but in order to have more of those people as clients, I should kind of do this. So like I get a lot of people in here, have these people and some of them would be you know would, would just like grow into the other offer as well so this is how i have my businesses combined right now okay makes sense that's the vision that's the vision okay. for the next what, couple of years at least yeah and, and just to like sum up everything about kind of the whole journey because obviously it's not enough time to go over like all the different details i'm sure blaze has some uh, content about that on his channel as well uh, going more in depth into his journey or if he doesn't then he should <laughs> yeah, then i should uh, like yeah but he know what you want to see <laughs> yeah but but basically one thing i can tell you uh guys about him is that he is one like intense motherfucker <laughs> he's like <laughs> he strives i think of comp competition uh maybe not as much now as he used to but like just to like let people know a bit more about your hobbies or or the things you were interested in before like you, you used to ride bmx like all day long basically you got really good at that you used to do bodybuilding and go to competition i don't know if you used to do competitions with bmx but i i bet you did, did yeah yeah i was like semi-pro yeah <laughs> yeah and then, breaking bones and everything <laughs> yeah and then you started uh like surfing recently as well right so I, i'm quite sure you're gonna be competing in that as well <laughs> no, in a few years i wouldn't I'm be trying surprised not to really i'm trying just to enjoy things now like, yeah. as a <laughs> but even with even when play started uh getting more into mindfulness and meditation like he used to make a competition out of that as well like he was <laughs> tracking all the all the minutes meditated and like showing us his results and everything so <laughs> Just so you guys get a bit of context about the, the type of person I think you are. Uh, I mean, I don't want to label you, but like people might be wondering, like how you actually got the information on how to, you know, run ads and deliver these results for people. Like you are the kind of person who once you get in interested in something, you get like pretty obsessed, right? Like you just hyper focus on things and you yeah. really enjoy uh, progress and I think everybody does but I think just some people are are get even more rewarded by that so they end up doing more of that um, so that's probably how you got like really good at running ads in in like what a year or so yeah I would say a year yeah give or take awesome so cool. so your question is what it, what do I what do I feel like is a secret behind these things like learning skills fast or 
I didn't really ask that question. I okay. just wanted to give some more context. But I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people would love to hear like, if you had just a couple, let's say you want to start, you know, let's just put yourself in the shoes of, of the younger you who just wanted to start their first uh, agency, for example, mm -hmm. like, first i think we both agree that even though everybody says like oh you can just straight up outsource the work and you don't even have to know what you're doing like i think we can both agree that's kind of just what the gurus tell you to buy have you ever met have you ever course. met someone sorry have you ever met someone in this agency space who are like legit like growing their agency they had like no clue how to like run the ads and the funnels and they're like yeah just sell bro like I no never people. or even with like the maybe they are there are people out there but i never yeah, I've I mean, met a guy. I've met a guy. Yeah. He was like, I'm making a couple thousand with this. He was just starting and he didn't really know how to like run the ads. He got a freelancer and I spoke to him like a year later and he was already making like 15k plus. And he told me like, bro, I learned them. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, no wonder. Yeah, yeah, I actually learned that. And to be honest, like people on Instagram ask me about, there is this thing people call it now, like drop servicing, where you drop ship services, mm, <laughs> you create like that, a website yeah. and you don't even have to know how to deliver the service. But I just think like, yeah, it might be working for some people. I think for the majority of people, like you cannot build a real business unless you understand the actual product you're selling and you know how to also deliver it for yourself. So um let's say if someone was just starting their first uh you know even if they just want to get clients for themselves and just you know deliver the results themselves or start an agency but the point is they have to learn a new skill that is valuable in the marketplace uh where they can get tangible results for their clients like what how would you go about learning a, a brand new skill from scratch in you know a, a few months let's say in under three months of time like what would be your process that you would take uh, if you had to learn, for example, like, I don't know, even even if with any skill, I think this would be an applicable process. Like if I if I wanted to learn cooking like really well or if I wanted to learn copywriting really well or whatever, like how would you go about learning a new skill set, whether that be advertising or creative stuff or sales or whatever it might be? OK, so the first thing I would do is I would assess what resources I have. Time, money. Like what, what can I actually allocate to, to, to learn? Because the easiest and the shortest way to learn a skill is really just to, you know, like supplement your time investment with money. Like that's the best combination. So if you can afford getting a course, get a course. If you can afford getting higher level help, meaning a coaching program, a group coaching program, maybe a one-on-one -on -one mentor who can like help me through the way, just do that. And uh, when people, people think about it, like even if it's not business, let's say you just want to learn English. I actually did that, right? I can watch YouTube videos learning English. I can actually pay like 50 bucks or 100 bucks for a course to learn English. Or I can pay someone like 30, 40 bucks per hour to sit, sit there with me and teach me English. Like I, I choose the last one, right? Because I, I had 30, 40 bucks per hour to do that. So I was like, I'm not going to watch YouTube videos. I'm not going to do the courses. I just go for the most, the easiest. I just want to go the easiest way possible. Right. And that's to have someone sit with you and point out where you are like messing up things. And so my step by step process is really this: like assess your resources, be thoughtful about what you can and cannot afford. And then reverse engineer from there. What is it that you can buy? What makes sense for you? If you can, if you if you have zero money whatsoever, that's totally OK. But just be mindful about it. So you're not stressing out if it's not working because, you know, you have to put in a lot of effort and time to learn those because you can't afford help right? That's my, that's my take on the whole thing. And then this being said, um, I think I just said it like to me that to me that now the way I acquire skill, let's say I want to get better at selling, or I want to get better at appointment selling or whatever area in my business I want to get better at, I just pay like a couple thousand dollars for someone to teach me how to do that, like a like a coaching program or one on one coach. Uh, that's my way to go about things because I just, I don't really have a lot of time to be honest, like, mm -hmm when I learn that feels like work to me. And so, you know, I would rather just spend money, learn a bit faster and then just enjoy life, go surf or whatever. That's, that's my take on it. Okay. So I don't know is, if, it, if it helps. Yeah. I think that made total sense to me. And uh, I, I think when it comes to like starting a whole new business, it's unfortunately not just a matter of uh, getting the skill sets. Cause there are a ton of people who are skilled at a bunch of different things. It's also like, I think Alex for just, just one just one second. Yeah, one second. 
All right, guys. Sorry for this quick pause. Uh, I think Blaze is like cleaning lady or something. Yeah, the cleaning lady wanted to Hoover here. I'm like, maybe this is not the best time. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. So what I was gonna say is, when someone's starting a new business, I think unfortunately it's not just about learning the skill sets. I think Alex Hormozzi puts it like the best way or this, or the way that made the most sense to me. It's your skills, your character traits, and your beliefs. So. Now that I kind of like understand how you would go about acquiring a new skill set, how would you go about acquiring uh, your new beliefs that would serve you to achieve whatever you are trying to achieve? And how would you go about acquiring the character traits? Because Blaze and I have discussed this like plenty of times uh, about how you can be allowed habits and kind of become the person who is able to do those sort of um, daily routines repeatedly for a long period of time that yield you the outcome that you are trying to achieve whatever that might be like if you are trying to build you know your body then you need to have the character trait of going to the gym and eating the right food and sleeping enough right if you are trying to make more money you need to learn how you can stay consistent with your outreach stay learning and improving and creating your offer and, and all those things so so beliefs and character traits uh, or habits how do you go about acquiring new ones uh, feel free to take a couple you know seconds to think about it um, yeah i'm actually but, thinking very hard because yeah. this is this is a topic we've been going like in circles for a long time now yeah um i can first tell you how i did it and then i can i can tell you like what i think would be maybe more beneficial yeah for sure maybe just go about like how you went about it how you built out your work ethic and your mindset and also maybe once you went through it, like you can think what advice you would give to your younger self to maybe speed up the process. But hey, maybe there isn't to, like, maybe it's not always the best to sp try to speed up the process. Yeah, maybe actually, you do need the time yeah. to uh, struggle with it for a long time. So yeah, just maybe take us through like how you got to this point where your mindset is not really holding you back uh that much i mean it it, it, all, it always is because at you're my own conscious. level it does right yeah. like yeah you're not conscious of it but at least you are you know stuck at, quote unquote at a higher level i can tell you i can tell you before. straight away yeah. i'm overthinking over and i uh, overthinking over and i analyzing things and this year i'm working on not to over communicate mm -hmm. right i just know these are the things i need to work on and i'm still messing that up all the time but i'm like please stop it like it's just too much because mine is too analytical it's just very analytical mm -hmm. that's what enables me to create like good processes and systems and course videos and stuff like that and people are like wow this is so detailed to me it's not so detailed it's just doing like i just put in the stuff i know right but then yeah, yeah. sometimes i'm just like mm, should i do this should i do that and someone from the outside is like bro just just do something it doesn't really make that big of a difference you're like sitting here thinking about this and like I'm actually true uh, so this being said that's the number one thing I think um, I would change like I would really start I didn't know so I couldn't really but I wish someone else if I hired someone a mentor probably he or she would have told me that that's what I'm dealing with so I can like tackle that a bit earlier it would have helped me a ton so again it comes back to like having one, someone help you one-on-one -on -one. And when I say a mentor, like, I think we have to define what it really means because all the people say, like, I have a mentor. People buy courses from other people and they say it's a mentor. Like, to be honest, you only have a mentor if you have calls like this with your mentor. And you can explain, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what I tried. This is why it's not working for me. This, like, you know, like proper one-on-one -on -one support. That's mm -hmm. a mentor. Like, if it's a group coaching, it's not a mentor a course in a group the, the, those things are not qualified as that i mean so, uh, so, sorry i don't mean to cut you off i think you can make a distinction between like you can still have someone i think as a mentor who you are not talking to on a regular basis but who you learn a lot from and i think you can still call that mentorship like i might learn maybe maybe i'm know, wrong with the lessons definition. from someone um who's a lot further ahead of me on a certain area and if i watch their videos and learn from them i think that's still like i can look at that person as a mentor of mine but the distinction i think really is having someone mentoring you versus just like having a mentor right because uh, having someone, someone mentoring, mentoring you or you, having their content mentoring you yeah yeah exactly like when you, you know have what someone I mean? mentoring like... you that's that's like where you get the meat and potatoes really and, yeah. and you see real progress because it's personalized right
Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, sorry, feel, feel free. No, to no, 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 no. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, maybe I was just like too, like, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about the definition. Let's be honest. It's um, not that clear, probably. I mean, yeah, I might be not as well. Yeah. And so given the fact that we also do mentor people and like, we are like, whatever, like, this is what I believe in. This is how I structure things. So that's why yeah. I'm like, you know, like super, um, yeah. Anyways, so mindset and habits to me, it was in the beginning when I bought a course for a thousand bucks, right? That's when I had like a lot of mindset things and habits. And I was like, I just need to do this. This is like genius. So I started doing all of them. It's gone to a point where I had like a three hour long morning routine. <laughs> Some of my friends were saying, maybe that's not the most effective way to start your day. But I was like, yeah, shut up, dude. Like this is my habits and my mindset. So what do you know? Um, and yeah, like they were right. Like I cut it down to like much shorter. But I think I believe you have to try things to know what's working and what's not. Like it's a constant process of like trying things out. Because if you don't know, if you don't try, you don't know. Yeah, and going to the extremes and all yeah. areas of life right? this is what i believe in like you push to all extremes and people talk about work-life balance i think the way to find work-life balance is to get really close to like burning out and then to get also really close to like doing nothing like zero like being really lazy yeah and so then you can like kind of find you know the spectrum where you want to fall and um for all the all the people out there when it comes to like mindset and habits i, I would say like again i like get a mentor because like these are specific things you can watch all the videos on youtube but i have friends they are watching all those videos you just like watch all those videos and i'm like okay great so what is it that you do from these and i'm like oh not much I'm like do you meditate yeah i try like i don't know but well, when was the last time you meditated like a month ago i'm like okay so you don't meditate right and i was like not really so like the thing is when you have someone taking care, taking care of you, right? They're going to call you out on these things. And that comes back to like accountability. Like if I was to mentor someone and he would give me a list of like, okay, basically so these are the 15 things I've collected from YouTube videos. I want to do as like habits and mindset. I'd be like, okay, bro, like let's do this too. Like effectively, like for like 60 days in a row. And then you can add an extra, right? As opposed to like trying all 15 and then like nothing's going to like stick. Um, so I think I answered like, to me, it's like one thing at a time, focus on one thing at a time, try it out like give your best effort. It's not like you go to the gym and then like three days later, it's like, ah, it's not working, you know, like, where's my muscles. Uh, so it's like, you have to like, be like, you know, you have to have that consistency to draw a conclusion and then move on. You try it okay. 60 days. Yes. No, no, is no, is a good answer as well. Yes. No. Is it working for me? Is, is it for me or no? If it's no, let it go the other one if it's yes stick with that and then try to like put in another one this is my mm. this is my way of doing things okay so that was like uh, that's like the fastest way you could go about it but i mean even before uh you know you had your first mentor like did you manage to make progress in staying more consistent and being able to do more work or hmm. only after you invested to, to be honest uh, money i don't think help? so if i'm being really honest to myself the only thing I did before investing into my SAP is tracking the amount of time I spent working. Like, can I actually work more men hours? And that was working because I'm like, again, like what gets measured gets done. So I was working more, but I was just finding more work. I was okay. not, I was not making more. Like I, you know, people work. Oh, I don't care what people say. We do work to make money. And the reason for that is, this is how economy works and when you do work and when you the more you make the more value you create in other people's life if you do it correctly right and so if you're not generating more but you're working more you are definitely doing something wrong right mm -hmm. maybe you're just not there yet maybe you are just you know have some missing puzzle pieces but that's something to be admitted and and be aware of so i was working more hours i was not making more money Right. I was just like stressing more, sacrificing things. I didn't actually want to sacrifice that much. Um, that could have been an easy route, but this is the one I took. And then once I bought a course, that's when I learned, you know, I visualized who I want to become. I brought it down. Okay. So this is the guy I want to become. This is what I want to achieve. And from there on, it was much easier because I like first time in my life, I knew what I want. Even if you think about it, like if, if I, if you were just sitting, I'm like, okay, let's, let's go that you want to go somewhere, right? But if you don't put it into GPS, like how are you going to get there? It's mm -hmm. going to be like clueless going all over the place. So 
it's just you have to like put in the destination to the gps so you can like kind of start driving towards that destination that's the way i look at it yeah makes sense one question i have uh and because people who are listening to this probably are or maybe a couple of them are thinking like you and i are probably really biased uh in that you know you're telling everyone to buy a yeah. course and buy that because you also do that for a living like you sell you know uh ip you sell intellectual property you do do mentorship that sort of stuff so why do you think uh personally that kind of this this whole sphere of courses and and consulting like why do you think it gets a bad rap uh, and why do you think the general public has uh or a lot of them have a, a negative idea about the, the industry as a whole because i think when if you go and ask like you know 100 people about it like a lot of them are going to be like oh yeah that, like, that's a scam you know it doesn't work it's just people did you also had a off. did you also thought it's like a scam in the beginning because i did the same i i, I honestly same. had uh that in my mind but personally I think I got introduced to this word at such a young age that my mind wasn't really closed uh, to it yet. Like I, I haven't really been brainwashed yet by society mm. as much because I got into it at like 14, 15. So I was already like, okay, I mean, if this person is, you know, more ahead in life in that certain area, I'm going to be open to what they have to say. And I'm just going to do what they have to say because I don't know shit uh so even when i bought my first course i never thought like even if i didn't get immediate results i was never like you know oh my god this was such a scam it doesn't work i was like okay like let me think about what i'm doing wrong and how i could improve and then like there is no way if you just keep your improving yourself and 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 like taking accountability as well not putting all the accountability kind of on the course creator or teacher then you will eventually succeed because it's like impossible. The only question I think on how you determine how good a program is or not is like whether it actually speeds up the process or not and like how helpful the, like it's it's really difficult to determine how good a program is uh, aside f- from the, the actual student results because, you know, there are so many variables in it. But anyways, I'm getting on a tangent, like, no, but it, it's important, important things you are mentioning, I feel like. Yeah, but but to, again, to get back to your question, like, why do you think that is the case that a lot of people have this negative idea about it uh, and think it's a, a scam or whatever? Because you said you thought that in the beginning as well. Yeah. So what made you change your mind? Yeah, so I was thinking to be, if I'm being really honest, I was thinking it's a massive scam scheme because <laughs> like the way I was thinking why why on earth would i pay a thousand dollars for a course or eight thousand dollars on a on a you know i actually paid like last time i paid like twelve thousand dollars on a mastermind program why would i do that if i can just like go i don't know google things and then ask from people and i'm just gonna get there anyways right and um the thing is that this is what i believed and so i'm like i can download them online for free so why would i pay for it and then all that kind of things um, but what I didn't know, because I've never experienced it, is that the, the things we mentioned in the beginning, like once you pay for something, then you pay attention, mm-hmm. right? So I was like, once I paid for the things, I was watching those videos in a different way or using the information in a different way or having more accountability or having more excitement about what I was doing. And so this is something I think you can only experience once you do the actual thing. So it's like, there is not really a way around it. And then I think also there is kind of like this jealousy at the end of the day, like so many more and more people are doing these things and like more and more people are talking, you know, shit on other people. And mm-hmm. so it's like, oh, he's a scam. He's a scam. He's a scam. As opposed to just like, no, I don't feel like no one is really like a scam, maybe a couple of people, you know, but, but ultimately everybody just wants to do good. And so, yes, there are a lot of business coaches out there. Yes, there are a lot of these people. But ultimately, I think what you have to find is find someone you trust. And that's it. It, it. it doesn't need to be the biggest guy out there. It doesn't need to be whatever. Just find one guy. Seems believable. He's done it before you. You trust the guy and just kind of lean in. Talk to the Who guy. you resonate and, with, right? Yeah, just have an open mind. Talk to the guy and then that's it. Like, and, then, and then obviously, like, try your best. Like, once you paid, like, try your best. Don't just sit around. Yeah, uh, yeah. But that's what I think. I think that's where the skepticism is steaming from. 
Um, also, I, I do understand like when you don't have a lot of money, it's really hard to put your money towards these things. But one thing I would say is that because I've been there too, and I just spend my money on other things. And like no one is really like if your goal is to make money, right? If you want to make more money online, most people just want to do that. No, no, not too many people. Yeah, I'm good. To do that. I don't want to make more, right? If that's your goal, maybe only maybe it would make sense to put your money into something that has a potential to give you more. And when I say that, I'm not talking about, you know, NFTs and crypto and all that kind of things. I'm not hating on them. I'm just saying, if you want to grow into the person who can generate money, then you have to have the knowledge to be there. And in my specific case, what I teach is like selling high ticket services. Well, you won't be able to do that unless you know how to talk, talk to people. So they want to book in an appointment with you and then how to talk to people on the Zoom calls or phone calls or whatever, so they give you their money. There is no way around that. You won't, won't be able to hire people to do that for you because you, you won't be able to train those people. There is no way around that. Once you, learn, once you learn them from someone and you get really good at that, you can grow this business. You can, I can find money wherever I feel like I need really money. Like if someone would be sick in my family, I would need more money. I know what to do to find more money. Like I just, mm. I just know what to do. And so once you know those skills, then it's easier to like start building the processes and the systems around it and like hiring people and stuff like that. But again, I think if you want to make more money, pay for information that has a probability of making you more money. Yeah. Definitely. Find someone I, believable to you. Yeah. And I think, uh, one if you more, know something, more. if you know something that's be better than this, when it comes to like making money, drop in a comment and I would check it out. Like I've, I've never ever in my life found something that, yields me higher returns than this so this is why i this is why i and i think vince would agree and this is my journey i was skeptical right pain i had long you know i was trying more 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 pain and i had a pain threshold like after i was like i can't continue going like this i just need to try something and that's when i dropped a thousand dollar or whatever it was like i think 700 on that thing and it worked out so then the next time i dropped fifteen hundred dollar and it worked again. I was like, oh my God. And then I dropped like a 5,000 on a mentor for like four hours of, you know, just talking to me. And that worked too. And then I, another 5K and then 12K. And now I just invest in another 12K to help people hire me. It's just, it's just, you know, it's just once you see what's possible, you just go going down this route. And then obviously if to, to this date, if this is the biggest thing that changed my life, and I, re I, re I really found this to be important. Like if it's the biggest thing that changed my life, obviously I want to do the same. W why would I do anything else if this is what I believe in? I believe mm -hmm. in this. So obviously I start like what I whatever I've learned, repackage, find some people I can help with this, what I know, and then just like help them through this journey. This is what I believe in. This is why I do. I mean, this is why I do what I do. Yeah. And one one thing I would add to that, I think is, if you are trying to build a service-based business or an information-based business online where there is no like physical tangible product, I think it's really hard for people. Like that's also one thing I think that makes people skeptical. It's hard to wrap your mind around the fact that you are not getting anything tangible, quote unquote, like physical. Like it's not like you are paying a thousand dollars and you get this object that you know you can actually touch and feel and like feel the weight of it and yeah. like use it for whatever. Uh, like it, it's not really a physical thing. It's, it's, um, you know, it's, not, it's basically knowledge or information. So it's hard to wrap your mind around that. But if you're trying to build something where you are selling also your services or, uh, or information, then how do you want to sell something like that if you have never bought anything like that? Because yeah. you will unconsciously. That's like, another thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, another Consciously. You will sabotage yourself from being able to sell your even your video services or your editing services for a high ticket fee if you never bought anything that's not a physical object for a higher price. Dude, uh, or at that's least huge. that's been the case that's with me, massive. right? Like I only started being able to sell um, like services for three five k once I actually bought uh, services for three five k. Because then you, this mental block that you have in, in your mind that like, oh, that's a lot of money for something I cannot physically touch. Like that just kind of goes away once you have 
uh, made the jump and and made a purchase yeah. like that. I mean, and literally, also, yeah, literally. So it's got you like I think that's huge. I just wanted to jump in. I think literally, if you're like trying to sell something for five k, let's say, or three k, mm -hmm. you never actually did that. You, you're asking the guy on the video to do something you would not do. Yeah, just let it let it sit sit for a second. It would be like, it's insane. It would be like dating, right? You would be out with your friend. You never approach the girl on the street. You, you know, amazing girls everywhere. You never approach. And you would tell your friend, bro, I show you how to approach this girl. Do it. And it would be like, oh, no, man, I'm scared. Yeah, dude, just do it. And then you deep down, you don't, you know, you, you don't know how to do that. So you won't be able to help your friend. Cause he was like, okay, yeah, um, maybe you do it first. And I was like, ah, oh, no, no, I'm just, you do it. And then you're like, and, and it's just awkward conversation. And both of you sitting there and he's throwing all the objections at you. He's like, I don't know, dude, it's a lot of money. And then you know what you have to say based on the script. Right. But deep down you're like, yeah, it's actually a lot of money. Fuck, I need to get yeah. this. And then that's how you feel from the inside. To me, when people yeah, yeah. is like, it's a lot of money. I was like, it's easy, bro. It's, it's only a question of perspective. Yes, it's, you know, fair amount of money, but, and then they feel the confidence in my voice. I'm leading them. It's like, don't let this step in your, because I know the journey. I've seen the thing. So I just try to like lead them through the whole thing. What, what mm -hmm. are you thinking? Why do you think it's a lot of money? Well, what you, you told me you want to do X, Y, Z, right? Do you think you can get that for less amount of money? If yes, what, what are those things? Make them realize it's probably not, not the way around it. They just have yeah, to jump yeah. or stay where they are. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just to finish up the point at why I think a lot of people are skeptical about the online education industry or self-education industry as a whole, I think is a big part of it is that there are a lot of people who might not be like straight up scamming people where they take their money and don't deliver anything but they do no wedding. And I think that's a huge thing. Like that's the biggest thing for me that differentiates someone who's like actually like moral, morals wise, like a decent human being and someone who's just like there to take your money. Like if they don't, if you're trying to buy something expensive and they don't get on a call, call with you uh, or at least a person in their team to get on a call with you to see if the product that they have is actually something that you need then then and they just like straight up take your money whatever uh then I, I don't really like that and i think that's a big reason why a lot of people don't get results with uh that uh because there are a lot of people out there and probably some of the biggest ones actually who just take your money no matter what and i think the better way to go about it is to actually only take on people into your uh, program even if you're selling your own services who the the actual product you're selling or service you're selling is actually something they need, right? Because then you don't have to feel bad about yourself as well if you're not a psychopath and or or a sociopath and you have like emotions. Like if you sell something that people actually need or that person actually needs, you won't feel bad about it. And uh, also then then I think this whole just general like stigma around this industry and, and online business as a whole can slowly start going away as there is more vetting and just more, um, I don't know, just realness in the industry, I would say. Yeah, dude, I, I agree 110%. I, I always want, also wanted to add, I think another big thing is that people, they watch a couple of videos, they learn something and then they reteach without trying it. That's mm. the problem. Like if you watch something from, let's say, let's say Vince, you join my program and you learn something from me in sales, right? And you close a couple of clients using that technique. And then a week later, you start teaching it. Good. Right. Cause you know how it works. But if you just like watch my videos and you, re, then you re-record the whole thing without you trying to implement it. It's not, it's, I think that's a problem. That's a problem in the industry. And um, like, I, I really believe only teach what you've tried before. Like even in my program, like right now I'm about to do a lot of Instagram shoutouts. And one of the guys were like, do like, you know, like what about the Instagram shoutouts, you know, part of the program? I'm like, dude, I'm working on it. I'm doing it right now. I want to make sure the content I put out, I'm trying it out first for you guys. So you guys are only, only trying things that are working or things I know. And so many people, they're like, oh my God, what are you going to think about me if I don't have that in my portal? guess what nothing he was like oh cool thank you i appreciate that let me know once it's done
Yeah. Right. And in my mind, I was like, oh, what are they going to think if I don't have this? They think nothing. They just, yeah. yeah. And they appreciate the honesty. I'm like, dude, I don't want to show something that's, I don't know how. I just need to do it first. And then I show you. Yeah. And this applies to not only people who sell education or information, but also if you're a service provider, like a lot of people on, on my channel are people who are creatives and want to start like selling their services at high ticket prices, right? Like even then, if you have enough, if you haven't even learned the skill set you're trying to sell, like you're going to have a hard time uh, and, you know, about the getting results for the client part, like, yeah, maybe your first client is not going to be super high ticket. Maybe you should just get a um, couple smaller ones or even, even do some free work in the beginning, validate the fact that you have uh, skill sets that can get the client's results. And then once you have some testimonials and previous client results, it's going to get a hundred times easier to sell to the next person. Because not only because they have proof that what you know how to do actually works, but only you, you personally have proof. And once you actually believe, and, and not just believe, but once you know that what you have to sell actually works, then it becomes a hell of a lot easier to convince other people. Because if you haven't convinced yourself even, then how do you expect other people not to sense that? Like, I believe that I do are, I agree. Like, yeah, just, just to give examples, because I love examples. I've been bombarded by messaging. Two, two of the biggest things out there right now is like people message me and they're like, hey, do you want appointment setters? Like, and then they send me this long of a message. And I'm like, is this really working? I know it's not working. So why are you like sending, you don't know how to set appointments and you try to set up. It's just, it's just so like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's clear that the guy doesn't know how to set appointments and he's trying to set appointments setting. Yeah, it's just and, and you have to or like Instagram somewhere. content. Like, They're like, yeah, Instagram content, right? Like it's like, and then they don't have anything on their Instagram. Yeah, you're like, oh, I, I do. The thing is, the thing is, at least what you do, you kind of have to like try it out and test it. Now, when it comes to Facebook advertising, for example, love people say, oh, yeah, sure. So what should I do? Start running my own Facebook ads? No, with Facebook ads, you have to like learn how to do that. And then sell it at a cheaper price in the beginning and, you know, have some kind of like promise to other people to trust you with that. Right. And then you get, you deliver results and then you use those as, as testimonials. Like, yeah. And even the same with any other service, like yeah. even creative services or social media management, like, yeah, you can just do like a cheaper work or free work in the beginning yeah. and, and build your skill sets up that way. Um, and don't, one thing, there, there's one thing, no shame in that. I think. I think one thing I would say is even like in my previous examples, if you are like trying to sell appointment setting services or content creation, like I would, if I, if I knew, I don't know how to set appointments properly, I would reach out in a different way. I would be brutal. It's like, Hey, I'm Tom. I've been following your content for a while. I would love to work with you. I have some skills in appointment setting. I've actually bought a course for $76 and I'm really trying to get better at this thing. Would you consider, you know, engaging with me to see if, you know, I can, if there is some work I can do for you, right? Or something like that. People would react so much better for an honest, like, and that's what I did in the beginning, right? Yeah. Don't try to act like you're like, you know, have a big whatever business if you don't have. Same with Instagram content. It's like, hey, I've just learned this. I'm just getting started. You know, I'm looking to get clients. Uh, I'm super passionate. I have this course or this mentor I'm learning from, and I'm just trying my best and looking for my first few clients to get insane results for. Yeah, I think that I, was my I leverage the in the beginning. Thing. In yeah, the beginning, yeah. when I was in sales course, people were like, why would I hire you? Not the, that guy. I'm like, that guy doesn't really care that much. Me, this is all I care about because I'm just getting started. I would, if I don't know something, I would learn it for you. I would spend days and days to learn those things for you. And they knew I, they knew I mean it. So they just hired me. They're like, okay, this place is kind of crazy. <laughs> Let's yeah, just give yeah. him a try. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we teach this in Clients for Creative as well uh, with Greg. Like you need to flip the script. When people ask you like, why should I hire you if you have no experience? You can flip it to your advantage by saying like, look, you will be my one and only client. So yeah. it's in my best interest to get you as good of a result as, as, I, as I possibly can and put in 200% effort. So you will tell other people also about, uh, you know, um, the results we got for you. And I will be able to show other potential clients that look what we did for this person, right? So there is a way to flip that script. And, uh, it's, I think and it's so true. That's the best way to go. 
Dude, it's so even if you think about it, like I'm trying my best to care about my clients, but the more people, it's just impossible. The more people I have, I'm working with, I just don't have all that attention. I'm really want to, but it's just impossible. And so I'm never going to give that much attention to anyone when I had my first client. Like it's just not going to happen. It's not realistic, right? And so I think that's a big leverage in the beginning when you're like, look, I have all this attention, all this energy, all this passion to do something. And, and then you can use it as a selling point. No one is really going to do that. You're going to go over and beyond. Hmm. Are you going to be the best? No, but that's already crystal clear. So, you know. Totally agree. Awesome. If you want, and if they want to yep. hire the best, they have to pay like astronomical fees. That's what yep. I do. do that. So they're like, oh, you're not that good. I'm like, well, yeah, if you want, you know, a good, really great guy to meet your funnel, it would be like, $36,000 or something. I actually like research how much it is because they were like, I'm like, yeah, but I can do it for like 1500 and try my best. And it's going to be 80% as good probably because I know their systems and I have their training and I'm just going to follow that for you on my yeah, own. Yeah, like course. learn the market as well and, and, and learn the logistics of how your industry works and learn the details. And then once you can speak the language of the market you are trying to serve, then people will take you a lot more seriously as well. Um, so yeah, awesome. I think we had like a great discussion overall about online education and self-education as a whole and hope you probably, pr pr probably a lot of you guys were able to take some, you know, tidbits from this and uh, maybe apply it for your own, um, you know, business attempts or just your journey in general as well. But before we end off this episode, I wanted to ask uh, a couple more uh, quick uh, questions uh, if that's okay with you mm -hmm. so absolutely first one is um what is like I, I know you are really good at sales uh and that's one of the main things that you know you focused on for the past years as well so for all the people out there in the audience who are just trying to get their first like couple clients what are what do you think are like the biggest sales mistakes that uh beginners make and uh, how would you kind of correct them? Like, it doesn't have to be super detailed. I know that's the ideal, but if people mm -hmm. want that, they can go on your channel and consume more of, you know, yours and I, I content. I have, well. con I have content around it. I have like a free playlist. Uh, maybe we can put it somewhere here. I don't yeah, know. definitely. Um, I will leave the, the link in the description for your channel, but uh, just a couple of the most obvious ones that, I th that you think uh, a lot of people are making. Not being mistakes. honest. I just stole, not being honest, mm -hmm. right? Because the thing is, when you are honest, you can protect whatever position you are holding. It's, you have mm -hmm. to think about sales as a chess game, right? So if you, tr if you are not authentic, you try to play some weird game, you don't fully know how to play. As soon as they call you out, you lose the game. Like, because yeah. you're bluffing and they're just going to be like, and they feel it. They're not stupid, right? Yeah, you can't play house of cards. Like you can't be all the, you know, card part of the house or whatever it's called in english yeah dude, uh, and so sales. what you say then you have a to little bit of that. wind is going to blow your whole uh you know building away yeah yeah i had the last time i was in a sales call with like really high-end program and in the beginning the guy was recording the call i was like dude great you record a call can you send it over to me at the end of the call he's like yeah yeah, yeah easy and at the end of the call i'm like dude actually because i was not buying i'm like i'm interested follow up with me send me over this call and he was like oh i actually have to ask from the owner of the program i'm like dude you're not you're not telling the truth now you told in the beginning you no problem you can send it to me now you have to check in with him and he was like he like i saw he's like oh, I, I guess we are both confused man because i told him because he, he told me i'm confused as well because i came that i need help and then he was pushing the sales and i didn't buy it because he was using the techniques i was aware of and i was like bro i'm not confused you are confused on this one now and this, he just lost me because he was not authentic. If he were to say, well, we are recording these calls for training purposes. And before I send it to you, I have to ask the guy. I would have had no problem. So this, this is a really good example. It's really fresh. Um, so again, like be authentic, be real. That's the first one. The second one is really, we already covered. So you can like go back and rewatch. I think that you would benefit a lot. You know, if you pay, if you want to sell something for 50 bucks, buy something for 50 bucks, right? or whatever your, the price you're doing. So that's another one. And um, the third one, I would say is to listen 
I think that's one of the biggest one I had. I, I watched back calls and I've taken notes and my biggest one was always shut up. Don't talk that much, please. And listen to them. And till this day, I'm still having these. Like I watch back calls and I even analyze because in my program, I ha- teach other people how to sell. To the, so they submit their calls and be together as a group environment. We watch back the call and take notes and, and analyze them, how they could close them. And uh, in many in many cases, we just don't listen to each other as humans because we really think about, oh, what should be the next question? How am I going to get to flip this around? How should I close this guy? How should I handle the objections? And they give they give to you all that information you can use to, to, to have those. And so that's my third one, really listen to other people. And I think what I even want to give an extra half, like what helped me to listen better is really meditation. Uh, if, mm-hmm. you, if you look into the research and the, and the science of how it works, um, it's proven that it really helps to like create more empathy and, and, you know, you can listen better to other people. And ever since then, I'm like closing at a higher rate. So I think it's safe to say that it helped me in, you know, so many areas of my life. Awesome. Yeah, I think those are all really, really good uh, pieces of advice um, for sales. Uh, the next question I have is who are your like, I mean, we can use the number three, but whatever, who are like your biggest inspirations, if you have any, uh, like, who are some of the people you now currently kind of uh, look up to in certain areas of life or, uh, or people whose content you really enjoy watching or just mm-hmm. learning from in general, like people who push you forward kind of on a day to day basis? It's a really good question, because I never had like, I never really had like strong role models in a way that I think um, I feel like I have a unique personality. And when I compare kind of because having a role model coming from comparing yourself to someone else, and they are further along the journey. So they always want to kind of like, you know, close the gap and be like them kind of. So never really had that because as soon as I started comparing myself to someone else in one area, I realized that you know, in other areas, they are kind of behind if I am am, am allowed to say that, right? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I never actually had these role models. But um, if I have to pick a couple names, I think my biggest inspiration is to this date is my meditation master, Danish, he's from Hungary. Um, like I've seen, I've seen many things in this life so far. Like I've, I've had mentors and co- and so many people help me, but no one has ever listened to me to that extent. And he mm-hmm. helped me in all areas of my life, not just in like one specific with one specific skill. Uh, so he's my biggest, he's my biggest inspiration. Um, also my mom, because uh, she from for the same reason, she's really into self-development she's like so strong like she's she has like a really a go-getter mindset and at the same time she's a good example of living a balanced life she's usually in balance she's Mm -hmm. she's like a she's like a stone right she's always here for us and then i really appreciate the help i got from gary vaynerchuk in the beginning he really like helped me to push to become you know like to work harder and i needed that in the beginning really um until the point when it was not really like benefiting me anymore um i also look up to and i thanks for sam owens for everything he did like putting out his course like he's he's the most analytical mind i've ever seen so i like in that area i look up to him like he's really cabled everything together for Mm us um i love sabri subi i really like sabri subi if you guys are like check check him out definitely he's a He's great when it comes to like communication, sales, uh, marketing. He's like an overall really funny dude. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Formosi, also, I really like his content. Um, and I think that wraps it up pretty well. Like the people I. Awesome. Yeah. And I also look up for my friends, like you, Vince, and for seriously, like you, uh, Unes, and all, you know, the group of people I'm hanging out with, my best friends. And the, the reason is that, like, I've never imagined there is so much quote unquote love in a, in like a close community of brotherhood. And uh, yeah, I look up for you guys for like, we are keeping this fire alive all the time and like taking care of each other. I think that's a big one. I think that's a very important thing to me in my life. Thank you. I appreciate that. And the respect is definitely mutual. Uh, and last question I wanted to ask, and this is kind of a, I guess more of a selfish question because I'm uh, I'm, personally very interested in this 
So I uh, just today, actually, and, and the past few days, I've been thinking a lot about this, how, you know, what? there are just some people who it looks like they are literally channeling kind of God's power or whatever mm -hmm. into their craft. And they are really in their zone. And uh, yeah, they are just channeling this higher energy. Like it, it just doesn't seem human the way some people uh, work. Um, yeah. Like if I think about Michael Jordan, I don't know if you saw his documentary or, or even like Kanye West or, or a bunch of people who are incredibly good at their craft. And um, sometimes I remember like when I first uh, flew out to, to be with you in Madeira like last year, I, I sometimes like saw that in you when you were working and you just got so locked in and focused on whatever you were doing. It, it almost looked like that that you are kind of channeling uh, like a higher energy or whatever into the certain task and i personally still struggle with this a lot um to to kind of put my everything and all my energy into just one thing and stay focused on that for a while so do you uh do you have any tips on how one can get into that state uh and and keep that state of uh of that insane focus channeling into whatever it is that they want to do or uh, is it just uh something that is not really like explainable in words it's more of a uh, like a, a rare phenomenon or, or something that some people have and others don't like what do you think about this and and have you personally noticed this uh, this thing happening with other people and yourself as well mm hmm it's a really good question. It's really difficult to answer. I I, I'm a, I want to be really honest. Like I have a mild kind of like ADHD. Like when I was younger, my mom took me to the doctor and they said it's like not, not hitting the threshold. So I'm like, okay, I'm fine. I don't need to take medication, but it's obviously there, right? And you smile because you know it. Mm. And um, the interesting thing when I started researching this is that my mind could be like scattered. Like I'm just like, oh, water, this, that, that. And then it's just like, I'm just all over the place. But at the same time, I have these moments when I'm like more logged in. So it's like, sometimes I'm just like all over the place, but with ADHD, people have this tendency to like be able to like, I can't switch tasks also. Like sometimes it's really hard for me to switch tasks. And um, that's, why, that's why I sometimes work too much. I'm mm -hmm. just not realizing I should stop. I'm just like hooked in. And so that is definitely an element which you know you can't like if you don't have that like and there are like pros and cons to it what i did is once i like realized this is what's going on with me um i embraced the positives and i try to build systems around the negatives and this is my advice then like figure out how your mind works like try really like journal when you don't like working when you like working when you had a good productive session what are the things you did why do you do things you do? Like all those kind of things. I think I do a lot of self-development, a lot of journaling, all these kind of things. And to me, these are the, my findings was, and I tell you what my finding was and how I solved or how, what sy systems I build around it. My finding was YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, newsfeed, extremely dangerous. Cause I'm like mild ADHD. Like I'm looking for information all the time. And then like, it just takes me away. Like just three hours down, you know, I just don't even know what I was doing. And I'm like, and then I'm like exhausted and I can't get back to work because my brain is messed up with dopamine. So cut them. Like I realized I need to cut all those. Right. And from there, I started to become more and more focused because I have like less stimuli around me. I couldn't do many things. Like I just mm -hmm. took everything away. That's the first thing. I think the second one really is, uh, test and learn like trial and error like you know me i try many things and so because i try try so many things fast then i kind of know what i want to do so it's like i'm not really like hesitant it's like hard to show me things that makes me hesitant because it's just kind of like you know i try that try this i know what this is where i want to go so it's like easier to focus when you know that but to get there you have to like have that phase when you try like a bunch of things when I try something new, I usually try a bunch of things very fast, like rapid. And then I start focusing as I find my way. And um, I had the third one. The third one was, it was really like how to focus, right? How to like channel that energy into what you do. 
yeah kind, kind of that yeah that's uh kind of what i was thinking like how how you get into that state or is it even something that uh one can consciously create definitely i i would say definitely like with journaling like building these systems into your life it helps um i i know what i wanted to say um also to me it's like because it gets too intense i figure that i need to build like breaks into it so like i can get out of work and it helps me a lot it's important maybe if you're like you know something like me and then i think people it's cliche but it's purpose like really like putting mental effort and time into trying to figure out why you do things and why do you mm -hmm. want to do those things like just if you go back and see how I explained when I was talking about like courses, coaching and things and how excited I get when I was telling those things, because this is my epiphany. Like I, I, I was living, I was looking at life a certain way. And then I was just like, boom, like hit by this thing. And I'm like, boom. And then like from there on, I'm like, okay, so this is what I want to do. And this is the type of people I want to help. And I don't know how, I don't know how to do that. I just going to figure out. So like that part of the equation is being solved. I'm not distracting by creating an e-com business or an Amazon FBA or a SaaS business or whatever it is. And I'm not saying those things are like not good. I'm just saying like, this is what I believe in. This is how I look at life. And so this is why I have these people, period. Mm -hmm. So I'm not getting distracted on that side. I think it's also important. I don't know if this helps. Maybe, maybe you yeah, can ask so. in a different way. So. If there is some specific information you I think that made made sense to me to be honest. Um so I think people can, you know, take that with them and and um kind of apply it for their own uh version of whatever they are trying to achieve. Also, I think one one thing and this is uh I think this is the easiest. Like it's so simple, but it's not that easy to implement. You just have to get into the habit of when you say something, you're gonna actually do it. Mm -hmm. And like you can get all the mentors in the world and try like billion things, but it's really about you. Like you, you can lie to yourself or you can be honest to yourself. And I think connection with honesty, the more honest I'm with myself, not trying to be like someone, I'm just like being very like objective and honest. The more I'm realizing that where I need to like, you know, be better at like saying what I do and doing what I say, um, I think that's the big one because once, once you're like really honest, then you can like be, then, then you're going to realize if you're not following through what you said you're going to do. And then you mm -hmm. can have an honest conversation with yourself. Say, now look, Blaze, you said you're going to do A, B, C, D, E, but you actually haven't did any of the, like, what's wrong, dude? Like, why are you not doing this? And then maybe you, and then maybe I don't want them bad enough and that's fine. Maybe it's just five is too much in the beginning and. I just need to focus on two or one, or, or maybe these are not the right things, but have those conversations with yourself. Mm. Cause I think most people just don't do that. They just like, Oh, I want to do this. And then when it's not working, I'm like, ah, oh, dude, it's just so much work. Let's yeah, try something yeah. else. That's easier. Or and just keep searching for something that's easier. When the reality, sometimes there is nothing. Just, if yeah, you see, it if is you what it people, is. Like there is no easy way out. There is no easy way to be good at anything, right? That's at least no one, no one really found those. To be honest, that the easiest path is really to get someone who is who knows how to do that, and you know, get them. And it's still not that. easy. Like it, don't still expect, easy. don't expect hiring a mentor or whatever to make your life easy. Because no, it's not going to be easy. But you will have clarity on what you need to do. And um, that's basically here is the way. Here is the way to think it. about it. Not just as you said. Let's bodybuilding. Perfect example. You want to build the best body in the world, right? And you want to be a champion. Now, you can do it on your own, and you or you can hire like a professional coach who's been like do this for like twelve years. Do you think you're gonna have more success with the professional course? Of course, yeah. Like sorry, the professional coach. He's gonna help you like along the whole journey with the mindset with all the things, um, not to have injuries, how to eat, like, all those things are going to be there for you, push you to the limits and everything. Is it going to be easy? Of course not. Maybe it's even going to be harder. And this is the thing, even with business coaches, yes, you join those things, and then maybe you're going to experience this even harder than you expected. But the, but the, but the thing you get out of it, that's going to be the real thing that's worth, worthwhile pursuing. 
right? Yeah, uh, if if your priorities are aligned. Obviously, if you want to be a swimmer, don't go into the yeah. gym and get a <laughs> yeah, yeah. bodybuilder coach. Awesome. I think that's also a very important one, yeah. I think it's a great point to to end this podcast. Uh, thank you for you know coming on to the podcast. Thanks for having and, me. Uh, I think uh, we touched a lot of yeah interesting topics. So, guys, anyone who's listening, like, let us know what you thought about this. Really hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you want to hear more uh, from Blaze, then check out his Instagram. I have one more before Blaise we leave. Blaise. I have okay. I have a note. I just put down one thing over here. I just wanted to share it to the people watching. If you, if you spend all this time watching this video and you, and you feel like you got something out of it, you had information that you want to make sure you take action on, or you want to like reserve that for yourself, not forget about it. This is the way I consume information. Whenever I watch these videos, if you spend, I don't know how long this is, but if you spend all this time, it's really worth spending an extra 20 minutes or 15 minutes or however long it takes to go back for the important points and take notes, open up a Google doc put in the link. That's what I do all the time. Put in the link and then take those notes under and then put it into Trello or schedule into your phone and whatever and reuse those three months later. Just so you have like some action step. To me, that helps so much. I do that all the time. I either don't watch content or if I do watch, I spend extra time to like extract the knowledge, what I learned and make sure I do something with that. Or else it's just brain is going to forget. I can guarantee you that. Hmm totally agree with that so yeah if you stayed at the end like there's an extra tip for you and and yeah do Do it do it yeah um so yeah thank thanks everyone for listening for us for this long (laughs) if you want to hear more from blaze then definitely give him a follow on instagram at blaze bowley or um, check out his youtube channel as well i will leave the links for all his stuff there and yeah, if you want to work uh, with him personally, then I would say probably those are still the best places to go and then just shoot him a message, right? Yeah, just hit me up on Instagram, probably. That's the easiest. Awesome. So thanks for listening, everyone. And hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Peace. Peace.